Gastric cancer. Introduction. Gastric cancer arises from malignant transformation of gastric cells. 85% of gastric cancers are gastric adenocarcinomas. There are other subtypes of gastric cancer that occur more rarely. Example, mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue lymphoma, leomyosarcoma, gastrointestinal stromal tumors. Histologically, gastric cancers are defined as either intestinal or diffuse. Although gastric cancers can occur anywhere in the stomach, there are epidemiologic differences between tumors that originate in the cardia and tumors with non-cardia origins. The rates of gastric cancer have been declining since the identification and treatment of Helicobacter pylori. Epidemiology the incidence of gastric cancer varies with different geographic regions. Overall, sex is more in males than in females. Peak incidence is 70 years. The highest incidence rates are in Eastern Asia and Andean regions of South America and Eastern Europe, while the lowest rates are in North America, Northern Europe, and most countries in Africa and Southeastern Asia. There is also substantial difference in the incidence among different ethnic groups within the same region. Risk factors. Risk factors for development of non-cardiac gastric cancers include long-term ingestion of foods with high concentration nitrates, such as dried, smoked, and salted foods. Infection with H. pylori, atrophic gastritis, gastroesophageal reflux disease, for cancers of gastroesophageal junction, higher incidence in individuals with blood type A, lower socioeconomic status and migration from nations with high incidence of gastric cancer, including nations in East Asia, Eastern Europe, and South America. The risk of cardiogastric cancer is increased in patients with gastroesophageal reflux disease and those who are obese. Age, male sex, tobacco use, family history, sedentary lifestyle, and radiation are risk factors for all types of gastric cancer. Clinical features. Many patients with early superficial disease are asymptomatic. As the disease progresses, patients may present with weight loss and persistent abdominal pain are the most common symptoms at initial diagnosis. Weight loss is present in 62% of the patients abdominal pain in 52, nausea 34%, dysphagia 26%, melena 20%, early satiety 18%, ulcer type pain 17%. Weight loss usually results from insufficient caloric intake rather than increased catabolism and may be attributable to anorexia, nausea, abdominal pain, early satiety, and or dysphagia. When patient presents with abdominal pain, it tends to be epigastric, vague and milder in the early course of the disease, but more severe and consistent as the disease progresses. Dysphagia is a common presenting feature in patients with cancers arising in the proximal portion of the stomach or at the esophagogastric junction. Patients may also present with nausea or early satiety from the tumor mass or in cases of an aggressive form of diffuse type gastric cancer called linitis plastica from poor distensibility of the stomach. They may also present with gastric outlet obstruction from an advanced distal tumor. Occult gastric bleeding with or without iron deficiency anemia is not uncommon, while overt bleeding that is, melena or hematemesis is seen in less than 20% of cases. The presence of palpable abdominal mass is the most common physical finding and generally indicates long-standing advanced disease. A pseudoacclasia syndrome may occur as a result of involvement in our back's plexus due to local extension or malignant obstruction near the gastroesophageal junction. For this reason, Gastric cancer needs to be considered in the differential diagnosis for older patients presenting with echolasia. 
Approximately 25% of patients have a history of gastric ulcer. All gastric ulcers should be followed to complete healing and those that do not heal should undergo resection. In later stages of gastric cancer, clinical manifestations may include hepatomegaly, ascites, Virchow's node, left supraclavicular adenopathy located where the thoracic duct joins the subclavian vein at the venous angle. Sister Mary Joseph's node, umbilical node indicating metastasis from a gastrointestinal or abdominopelvic malignancy. Malignant acanthosis nigricans, in particular associated with gastric adenocarcinoma. Pathology. Most common type is adenocarcinoma in 90% of cases, typically localized exophytic lesion with or without alteration, arise from glandular cells in the stomach, usually located on the lesser curvature of the stomach. Signet ring cell carcinoma. The carcinoma shows pattern of diffuse growth. Multiple signet ring cells is equal to round cells filled with mucin with a flat nucleus in the cell periphery. Less common is adenosquamous carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. Lauren classification of gastric adenocarcinoma. The diffuse and intestinal types of gastric cancer as classified by Lauren describe the two biological entities that are different with regard to epidemiology, etiology, pathogenesis, and behavior. Intestinal type, approximately 50% of cases. Intestinal gastric cancer is more common in males and older age groups. It is more prevalent in high-risk areas and is likely linked to environmental factors. Features, polypoid glandular formation, expanding non-infiltrative growth pattern with a clear border. Diffuse type in 40% of cases, approximately. The diffuse or infiltrative type is equally frequent in both sexes, is more common in younger age groups, and has a worse prognosis than the intestinal type. Features. Infiltrative growth and diffuse spread in the gastric wall, no clear border. Note that the main carcinogenic event in diffuse carcinomas is loss of expression of E. cadherin, a key cell surface protein for establishing intercellular connections and maintaining the organization of epithelial tissues. Mixed type, approximately seen in 10% of cases, as the extent of the disease in mixed type carcinomas is often difficult to establish the same treatment principle is used as with diffuse type carcinoma. Diagnostic procedures. The two main modalities for gastric cancer screening are upper endoscopy and contrast radiography. Upper endoscopy is the best initial test. Upper endoscopy allows for direct visualization of gastric mucosa and for biopsies to be obtained for diagnosing precancerous lesions such as gastric atrophy, intestinal metaplasia, or gastric dysplasia in addition to gastric cancer. Although it is more invasive and has a higher cost, upper endoscopy is also more sensitive for diagnosing a variety of gastric lesions as compared with alternative diagnostic strategies. Contrast radiography. Double contrast barium radiographs with photofluorography or digital radiography can identify malignant gastric ulcers, infiltrating lesions, and some early gastric cancers. However, a false negative barium study can occur in as many as 50% of cases. In early gastric cancer, the sensitivity of a barium study may be as low as 14%. The one scenario in which a barium study may be superior to upper endoscopy is in patients with lenitis plastica. The decreased distensibility of the stiff, leather flask appearing stomach is more obvious on the radiographic study and the endoscopic appearance may be relatively normal. Other tests. 
serum pepsinogen, a low serum pepsinogen 1 concentration, and a low serum pepsinogen 1 or 2 ratio are suggestive of the presence of atrophic gastritis, a risk factor for gastric cancer. Serum pepsinogen testing has therefore been proposed to identify higher risk individuals who could benefit from gastric cancer screening with upper endoscopy. Serum trifoil factor 3 is a small stable protein expressed in the goblet cells of the small and large intestine and in gastric intestinal metaplasia. Micrornas. At least three microRNAs, microRNA-421, microRNA-18A, and microRNA-106A are highly expressed in gastric cancers and are detectable in peripheral blood and gastric aspirates. Serological markers, tumor necrosis factor alpha as possible future tumor marker, some studies suggest that tumor necrosis factor alpha increases the risk of gastric cancer. According to these studies, tumor necrosis factor alpha may have an application in the future as a tumor marker. Tumor necrosis factor alpha levels are higher among patients colonized by H. pylori. However, the clinical significance of this finding has not been fully established. Clinical staging and the selection of treatment. Although staging is most accurately determined through surgical pathology, clinical staging directs the initial approach to therapy. Patients who appear to have local regional disease stage 1 to 3 after preoperative testing are potentially curable. All patients with a primary tumor that is considered to invade through the submucosa, T2 or higher, with a high suspicion of nodal involvement on pretreatment staging studies should be referred for multidisciplinary evaluation to identify the best treatment strategy. Patients with advanced stage 4 disease are usually referred for palliative therapy depending on their symptoms and functional status. Multiple studies indicate both longer survival and better quality of life with systemic treatment. Suspected gastric cancer. Upper endoscopy with biopsy is done, which is the first initial best test. If it's negative, consider other diagnoses. If it's positive, confirmed adenocarcinoma. Next, there is staging. First, abdominal and pelvic CT scan. Further tests include abdominal ultrasound, thoracic CT scan, PET scan or CT scan, endosonography, diagnostic laparoscopy. Very early stage, there's only mucosa, no metastasis. Limited stage, there's resectable tumor, no distant metastasis. Advanced stage has an unresectable tumor and or distant metastasis. For the very early stage, endoscopic resection is the treatment of choice, limited stage, surgery, tumor resection, lymphadenectomy, palliative therapy with chemotherapy, surgery if obstruction is present, is a treatment of choice for advanced stage. Indicators of unresectability. The only widely accepted criteria of unresectability for gastric cancer are the presence of distant metastasis and invasion of a major vascular structure such as aorta or disease encasement or occlusion of the hepatic artery or celiac axis or proximal splenic artery. Distal splenic artery involvement is not an indicator of unresectability. The vessel can be resected and block with a left upper quadrant, exenteration, stomach, spleen, and distal pancreas. Treatment. Exact therapy, which may be either curative or palliative, depends on staging and the type of tumor. Endoscopic resection, it is only for tumors diagnosed at a very early stage when they are still limited to the inner lining of the stomach. In the U.S., this is not usually the case, therefore this treatment method is seldom used. Surgery, perioperative chemotherapy, sometimes radiotherapy. Trastuzumab is indicated for HER2 plus gastric adenocarcinomas, 
This type of tumors express human epidermal growth factor receptor 2. This protein is responsible for normal cell growth. However, it has also been linked to breast and gastric cancer progression. Trastuzumab, a monoclonal antibody, interferes with this protein, slowing or stopping tumor growth. Surgery. Radical gastrectomy or lymphadenectomy, operative standard. Resection of the lesser and greater omentum and radical lymphadenectomy. Ru and Y gastric bypass. The surgeon separates the proximal jejunum from the duodenum and creates an end-to-end -end anastomosis of the jejunum with the remaining part of the stomach. This is known as gastrojejunostomy, or in case of total gastrectomy with the esophagus, esophagojejunostomy. Duodenal stump is connected distally with the jejunum using an end-to-end -end anastomosis. Anastomosis between duodenum and jejunum resembles a Y. Alternative is subtotal gastrectomy. Prognosis. Since there are no early signs, gastric cancer is often diagnosed very late. At diagnosis, 60% of cancers have already reached an advanced stage that does not allow for curative treatment. Early gastric cancer has the best prognosis. Distant metastasis or peritoneal carcinomatosis dramatically worsen the prognosis and are lethal most of the time.